when you're thinking about creating your resume in your LinkedIn profile, you need to pass on that passion for learning and for discovery. That's actually it. It's people that have those discovery and exploration skills. So part of that messaging should be in your branding statement and should be part of your resume. Welcome to Tech Talent Today, where IT leaders share their tough challenges, creative solutions, and latest insights. You'll discover fresh ideas and inspiration here with your host, IT staffing veteran and president of Clearmont Technologies, Jody Kulik Mayer. And now, here's Jody. Welcome to Tech Talent Today. I'm your host, Jody Kulik Mayer. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Jennifer Hay. Jennifer has been writing technical resumes and LinkedIn profiles for IT professionals for over 15 years. She has several certifications, including Academy Certified Resume Writer, Resume Writing Specialist in Information Technology, and Certified Professional Resume Writer. Her background is in IT, BI, and Data and Information Management, so she likes to hear about all the techie and innovative things people have done. She uses an in-depth process to listen to her clients' project stories so she can connect their technical achievements with true business value. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. I appreciate the opportunity. So candidates ask me all the time to look at their resumes, and people really struggle with what to put on their resumes, and they have a lot of questions. So I'm so thrilled to be able to talk to you and tap your expertise So why don't you tell a little bit about your background and how long you've been writing resumes, things like that. Oh my, I'm kind of an old dog in this space. I've been writing technical resumes for almost 15 years. Wow. I actually was laid off in 2008 and someone suggested I write technical resumes. So here we are now, (laughs) all these years later. So... Yeah, I first had to learn how to write because I was not a great writer, and that was a painful process. And I decided to specialize in technical resumes because that was my background, and I have a very broad understanding, which is kind of perfect for the resume writing industry. Right. So why do you think like IT resumes are different than possibly other re- uh, industries? One of the major challenges with technical resumes and with uh, not writing pages and pages of stuff is that you really need to blend the technology and the technical details. And then you gotta connect that with some other business or technical value. And a lot of my clients are a little bit too focused on the tools that they were using. And there needs to be that, but you can't overload it because you don't know who's going to be viewing your resume, whether it's someone in HR or maybe it's a technical manager. So one of the challenges, you have to write for both levels. Now, what do you mean for both levels, for the technical manager and the HR? Exactly. Yeah, you have to write because the reader could be in the HR department or it could be a technical manager. So you need to be able to speak to both of those audiences. Right, right. And what are some common myths with IT resumes? One of them is that they're written the same way as non-technical resumes. A lot of people that write about resume writing don't have a technical background. And what they do is it's essentially they're regurgitating the standard resume writing advice. So, yeah, let's actually, let's get back to that. To the standard resume writing advice? Yeah, so what... What is standard resume writing advice? Like the one page resume, is that it? Oh yeah, the oh the myth the myth of the one page resume. The thing is if you've got a technical professional, like I said, so you gotta use the technology, the technical details, it's not possible to have a one page resume unless you're fresh out of college. And the point is, though, but you don't want to go on for five or six pages. So typically nowadays, two to two and a half pages, that's fairly common. So what you need to do is you, and you don't have to highlight everything that you did. So you've got to sort of pick those project efforts, those project stories that really illustrate your strengths and be able to do that in a concise way, which can be difficult, like I said, for people that 
deal with technology all the time. They work on so many different projects that this just makes it difficult to decide what to include. Right. I, I can see that. And do you think people should include like everything in their entire career? I mean, you could be working for 25 or 30 years, or do you think they should just include the last 10 years? Like, how do you address that? I normally focus in on the last six or seven years. You know, technology, as everyone knows, it evolves so quickly that what you did seven years ago could be a software that's no longer used. Maybe it's a technical practice that is out of date. The thing is, recruiters want to know what you've been doing the last year. And that's not practical. You do need to go back further. So like I said, six or seven years is a good baseline. But then again, sometimes I'll have clients that did something 15 years ago that was sort of pivotal to their career. So you might want to think about uh, bringing in some of that message, sort of like lessons learned from an earlier career path. So when you get to the older stuff, obviously you're removing any references to technology. You know, that's probably changed. Right. And you're really condensing because people are scanning. And for the older stuff, it's even quicker. So for each of those older positions, one good thing is to think about what difference did you make? And can you write that in just two or three sentences maximum? So that when they're scanning this easily, that information is easily consumable. See, I love that you say, write what difference that you made, because I find a lot of people just put a laundry list of everything they were responsible for and did. And it doesn't really like make the connection for you of how they made a difference. Yeah, I'll see some resumes that is essentially just a bunch of tools. And I'm thinking, that's boring. You know, it, can you imagine having to read resumes that are just a list of tools? And sometimes people, you know, I see long lists, some of it's strategic, the next bullet item may be very, you know, detailed, technical. So you just... It's fine to write a, res a longer resume. You know, first of all, you want to create a document that highlights your strengths. But then part of that, before setting it out, you have to look at each sentence and say to yourself, what value does this provide? Is this important? Is this information important to include? And then if you go through all of that, it should be fairly easy to kind of condense down the messaging. That is a great tip to look at each line like that. Now, what do you think about, a lot of people write like involved in, and it just makes you wonder, like, were they responsible for it or not? Do you tell people to use certain verbs or how do you address that? <laughs> you know, it's funny. One time I read, you know, some of the old resume writing advice you hear was like, never use the word managed because that's too common. And I'm like, but that's what some people do, right? Right. And they manage a project. I will use involved sometimes if the client is more com the, the point is you have to have a resume, even if you hire someone, your resume needs to talk the way you talk. And for some of my clients, involved is they or they might change it to contributed. Worked as part of a team. Those are alternatives to kind of the involved phrase. But that's fine. Sometimes you just need to get the information in there. And so, you know, you could say participated in. I know other people will say that's kind of weak, but it just, like I said, it all depends on the person's comfort level with the language used. Right. And I guess you have to look at the resume as a whole. Just yes. one bullet does not a resume make. <laughs> X, yes, absolutely. So. Right. And what do you think about putting your date of graduation I recommend that people should not do that, but I'm just curious what you think. I use a, it depends. For some of my clients, you know, if you're talking more than 10 years ago, then you don't just remove it. Something more recent, then I might, inclu I, I might include that. Right, right. And what about a cover letter? Yeah, should a person write a cover letter? Well, the challenge with cover letters is that a lot of people don't read them. I've been to lots of conferences where recruiters are like, no, I don't read the cover letter. I don't have time. <laughs> I'm too busy. So, but the thing is, if the company asks for a cover letter, you need to write one. 
It needs to be very short, very concise. So if you need to write a cover letter, suggest you go to the company's press releases, go to the website, figure out what is important to them. What are they talking about? There might be case studies that you can find on their website. And you can, so that when you write that cover letter, it's highly targeted. It's short and it's highly targeted to the position. Right. Now that's good advice because as a recruiter, right, I don't really read the cover letter. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting right to the meat of it because I'm looking for something specific. So I'm scanning to see. But once I scan and find it, I'll look deeper. And then I may take a look at the cover letter also just to see somebody's, you know, skill in writing, though it's possible they hired somebody, so it might not be yeah. their skill in writing. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen plenty of resumes where people got a resume writer, they wrote some what I call flamboyant, not quite accurate achievement statements, but the reader knows that. So you just, my thing is, no, don't ever exaggerate that your achievements really speak to what you do. And those can be extremely interesting. So you don't want to kind of fictionalize <laughs> your resume. <laughs> so... Right. No, that, that's a good point. And do you think having a summary at the top of your resume is important? Summary is kind of like that same thing with recruiters. What I learned is that, or the, actually this Resume Writing Association some years ago did a study looking at resumes, where do the eyeballs go, all right? They skipped the summary. You want to, it, it seems like most recruiters that I've spoken with are where did you work last? What was your job? What were your overall responsibilities? And then if they're interested, they might go back up to the summary. But it's still important. It's that thing is, it's still important to have something there. But the summaries also, like the cover letters, are relatively short. And these days, I'm only writing maybe four sentences, five sentences at most. And nothing... Generic. Sometimes people just, they skim resume samples and they grab something for themselves. And I'm like, that doesn't do anybody any good. So you just, if you start and you write out, what do you want people to know about you? What are those top three things? So the summary can be very beneficial. Right. That's a great question because sometimes you need questions to help get started to know what you want to write there. Like in the summary, it seems yes. you have to summarize a whole career but that's not really it. What you just said, what are the things you want people to know about you? The summary needs to position you for your next career move, right? So you need to, like a lot of my clients, it's, it, you're in IT, uh, your job title probably doesn't relate to what you really do. You've taken on expanded roles and responsibilities. So that information needs to be clear in your summer. You need to write to the things that you also can do. You know, like I said, without fabricating, but it's that, like, for example, if you want to go to a managerial thing, in your summary, maybe you're talking more about the team management work that you've done. Even if it, you were a project manager, there's an aspect to team management. So you need to bring that messaging into your summary that connects with whatever that next job would be. Right. You know, and I want to mention here that you've developed a really helpful website that anyone updating their resume should check out. It's itresumetips.com. I'll put it in the show notes, but you have so many resources there. It's just a, a fabulous um, I guess resource <laughs> for people <laughs> who are writing their resumes. You have examples. You, and you have something called career storytelling. What is that? I see that term quite a bit. And most people, when they're talking career storytelling, are about the trials and the challenges you had throughout your career. But in my case, the career storytelling starts with project storytelling. Okay, so, and my clients seem to, they seem to get this. When I write a resume, of course, I'm interested in whatever the end result is, but I'm also interested in what the journey was to getting to that end result, because in there, 
there's the the opportunity to talk about the leadership skills that you assumed, those expanded roles and responsibilities. So in that career storytelling part of my website, what I've done is I've shown examples of how you can take stories and how they would then translate into a resume. So people can see, you know, uh, there's, I, I can't remember how many examples I have, but it's to see how you can take a general narrative about your work and create something more interesting for your resume. So that's what that section, it's a very, it's a practical step-by-step guide on how to do that. And so does it have questions that people could ask themselves to get the juices flowing? Exactly. Yes. And the thing is that the the career storytelling, I also have a branding, how to create a branding statement. So those two things are somewhat similar. The process is a little bit different, but it's about asking the questions to get people thinking about what your strengths are and, and thinking of, and it's sort of evaluating what you want to do next as well. And so, yes, it is sort of, uh, you know, like, for example, some questions might be some simple as, why was the project funded? Why was it important? What are the expectations? What kind of challenges came up? Who did you work with? So it's it's just these, not every project's going to have to, is going to address those questions, but it, it is to create a narrative to think about the work. Right, because I don't think people might necessarily think right about the funding and why it was important. So I think that's a great starting point to get your narrative going. The thing is, a lot of folks, my clients, are working as part of a team effort. And sometimes it's a really good thing to bring in the narrative of what was the overall project. And that's sort of where the career storytelling, thinking about what was the overall thing that you were involved with and how did you contribute? And um, those were the, those questions are designed to, to get out that type of information. Now, not to put you on the spot, but what what is a branding? Like, can you give an example of a branding statement? Like, what does that mean? You know what I can do? Let me just bring one up, okay? Excellent, uh, great. So let's just... do that. Hold on just a okay. sec. All right. Thank you. I think people will be very interested in what a branding statement is. And they can, of course, go to your website, itresumetips.com, and see all the branding statements. I actually have on that on that branding section, I actually have an article about it's a step-to-step guide. So I'm, I'm actually walking you through for starting out with what is a branding statement, what makes a good branding statement, you know, the fact that it has to be concise You need something kind of catchy so it's memorable and it's credible that you would have achieved that. That article is a step-by-step. So for the branding statement, I'm using five questions. What are your most significant personality traits? Are you easygoing? Are you charismatic? Are you cooperative? Whatever it is to think about those those traits, your personality traits. Because if you're doing, if you're showing a personality trait in your work, then you're doing it as home, at home as well. So it's just something that's natural to you. And then the second question is, what is your role as a professional? This isn't just about the titles that you've held, it's the actual role that you perform. Like I mentioned, a lot of IT people take on expanded roles and responsibilities. So I want to know, have you, are you working uh, leadership type roles? Are they more analytics, business intelligence, or data administration job roles? So the next section is creating a draft. Here's an example of one. I am an experienced and engaging educator dedicated to sharing knowledge with data and information professionals to help them excel in their jobs and their careers. Now that's a rough draft. That's the rough draft. <laughs> that sounded good to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's another phase that actually the final, this is for a client, the final one that we used. I am an educator sharing 25 years of experience, curiosity, and learning so others may have equally rich and rewarding careers. Nice and concise. 
Yeah, and that's not necessarily just in your resume. That's a phrase. When you think the branding, this is something that needs to carry over to your LinkedIn profile and your cover letter. It's having a really clear understanding of what you do. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely, yes. And I think the questions really help you focus in on what you do to get down to the core of it. Exactly. And you know what, when I, part of what I do before I'm determining if I'm a good fit for a project is that we have a, we have a conversation or I have a conversation with people. And the, the thing that people find most beneficial in that conversation is an understanding what are they best at? And it's not about implementing this technology. And it's almost a relief because then, then you have something that really matches your natural self. And then you can, like I said, you can then propagate that through your communications, through your LinkedIn profile, et cetera. So do you think it's hard to do your resume just by yourself and not having another person to talk it through? Well, the reason I created that website is because I do believe you can do it yourself. This is the website is designed to be a do it yourself kind of uh, resume writing process. The thing is that people that, that the clients I work with, they're changing jobs every couple of years. And you don't want to go back to see a resume writing, a resume writer every two years. So if you begin to kind of capture this information. So let's say that you've completed a major project. It went really well. If you just take a couple minutes to document a couple things about the project, that's your source in the future when you rewrite your resume on your own. So I think that if you thought these, it's intended to be very practical step-by-step -step things. And I think people are perfectly capable of doing that on, or, on their own. Wonderful, that's great. And you mentioned the LinkedIn profile. Like, do you think people should just sort of copy their resumes into their LinkedIn profile? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? I like to, I like to have my clients maximize <laughs> on their LinkedIn profile. So if it says 2,600 characters, I'm going to use 2,600 characters. Because I just, the deal is that there are limitations, you know, for how much information you can include. But what's the negative? The, the thing is, the summary on your LinkedIn profile is never a resume summary. LinkedIn still is a networking, it's a networking site. And so you want in your summary on LinkedIn, oh my God, there's so many opportunities. I once wrote for this uh, cybersecurity professional and we described um, how he was smarter than the hackers. And this was based, we had numbers. <laughs> to, to go with that. So, and that, he loved it because it really fit, you know, it fit his personality, it fit the marketplace. So your LinkedIn summary can be about anything. I have other clients that um, maybe there's a particular skill that they have or something that they want to move toward. All right. So let's say that you want to be a data scientist, but you're currently a data analyst. So in your summary, you can talk about how you're studying to be a data science. You can talk about the concepts and how you see that they're helpful. And those are the kinds of things that you can do. There's a lot of opportunity in the summary. Right. I think people don't view it as opportunity. I mean, you feel it like it's pressure to fill it out. <laughs> it is. <laughs> or you just copy the resume summary there. But I, I love that you have like another way to look at it. And do you recommend that people put up a picture? Yes. I like a picture too. And it should be a carefully chosen picture. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I once told a guy, I said, can you please change your LinkedIn profile picture? And he said, oh yeah, my wife says I look like KGB. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was from Eastern Europe. And I'm like, it does. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so did he put so, a friendlier, happier looking picture? Yeah, you know, that you know, you could have you looking off to the side or whatever. But 
Yeah, the thing, like I said, LinkedIn is a networking site. So you want to be able to show who you are. But I, I will also tell you that I had another client who was African-American and he didn't want to put his picture on the website because he felt that that was an obstacle for the types of jobs he was applying for. I have heard that as well. Yeah, so what I did is I actually created like a branding image for him. And we use that instead. What is a branding image? Like a like a logo or? It's kind of, like, it's like a, yeah, your career logo. I think with that person, as I recall, we did some kind of thing like a, like a life cycle of a technology implementation. I think it, I did something like that, like the design phase, the development, testing, something showing those concepts. Right. Was that recently? Because I know a lot of companies are focusing on uh, diversity and inclusion. Is that, you know? That was probably six or seven years ago. Right. So, so hopefully things are changing. I am hoping so. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot more companies are really being proactive about that. Because the reality is, the more diverse your team, the probably the better and the stronger it's going to be. So I'm hoping that that's a, a, not the same situation. Right, right. Now, what about for IT consultants? Because, right, they change positions a lot more frequently than somebody full-time. What advice would you give to an IT consultant with their resume? Well, there's a couple challenges with being a consultant. It depends on what kind of consultancy you're doing. I've worked with a number of people that are basically vendor tool implementers. You know, so there, there's a suite of tools that they use and they go out and they implement that for the vendor. And the challenge with that is that every project is very similar. And you don't want to say on your resume, I did this, and then next year I did this again and again and again. So what I typically use under those situations is I want to think about three main things. I want a, a description of what the project was, what were the expectations for the deliverables. Think about the challenges and then think about the, the results. You can include similar projects, but you want to highlight different aspects to the project. So for example, if you have these similar projects, then maybe you want to highlight more of your team management skills in one of them. Maybe you want to talk about if it was a turnaround situation. Those are always good in resumes. So you want to focus in on a different aspect to the project so it doesn't appear to be exactly the same. Right, right. Yeah, it is more challenging when you're doing a similar thing over exactly. and over. And the, the thing is that when you're, if you're a consultant and you're applying for a position as another consultant, it's a different, there are different requirements as far as what the resume should look like and things like that. If you're trying to get into a pro, there's plenty of consultants, you know, you do that for a while, you get tired of the grind and you want to work for a regular company. So you need to take a, a slightly different approach in that scenario than if you are writing the consultant resume, because that's more about expanding business with the client. And those are more of the messaging, you know, like helping with business development, those kinds of things, where if you're working in-house, it needs to be more about like a, the, the team skills and, and those kinds of things. Right. So Jennifer, this has been fantastic. You have so many great tips and your website, which is itresumetips.com. Do you have a parting thought for the listeners? The thing is that IT attracts people that are curious, naturally curious and inquisitive about things. There are so many changes. I mean, now I'm writing resumes about virtual reality and I'm writing more healthcare informatics resumes. There's a lot of exciting things come, you know, coming down the pathway. And for those people that love that, the research, that, that love the, the changing environments, it's an ideal situation. And 
when you're thinking about creating your resume in your LinkedIn profile, you need to pass on that passion for learning and for discovery and exploration. That's, that's actually it. It's people that have those discovery and exploration skills. So part of that messaging should be in your branding statement and should be part of your resume. Great advice. And if someone wanted to get in touch with you, what is the best way they would get in touch with you? I would love people to visit my new website. There is a link to me on there. There's also a page that people can ask a question. So if there's something that you'd like, you know, you'd like an answer to, then you would just go to the website, there's a form, and I'm happy to respond to that. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. This was a fantastic and very helpful conversation. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Tech Talent Today, brought to you by Clearmont Technologies IT Staffing and Search. You can find out more at clearmonttech.com. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and share. See you next time.